Good evening. Welcome to the select board meeting. Excuse me. If you want to have a conversation, you can definitely go outside. But I'm going to start the meeting. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the select board meeting of Monday, October 7th, 2019. I'm Diane Mahan. Uh, to my right is John Hurd, Joseph Curo, Dan Dunn, Steve DeCourcy, Adam Chaplin, Doug Heim, Marie Krapel, the board administrator. Thank you. Um, the first item on our agenda is a proclamation for National Chiropractic Health Month. Um, do we have a representative here for that? Uh, Marie, was someone going to come in? She was supposed to be here at 7.15. Um, maybe I'll just wait and uh, go to consent agenda. Uh, Minutes of meeting, September 23rd, 2019, request special one-day bear and wine license, 10-13-2019 at Robbins, at Whittemore Robbins House for a private event, Paloma Canas. Request special one-day all-alcohol license, 10-17-29 at Arlington Catholic High School for Arlington Food and Drink Festival, Elizabeth Locke. Arlington Chamber of Commerce, Executive Director, request special one-day bear and wine license, 10-19-2019, Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Lauren Savoy, Rob Hilferty, and a request for a special one-day bear and wine license, 10-26-2019 at, Robin, at Whittemore Robbins House and Park for Sandra Ann Foundation, 2019 Oktoberfest, Bob Sheshereg, nah, and I apologize. Um, first, is there a motion? Move approval subject to all conditions and set forth. Mr. Kiro, Second. seconded by Mr. Dunn. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to any of these events? If not, any further questions or <coughs> comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Um, I don't know if the person who was here for National Chiropractic Health Month has come in yet. Okay. I'll go to appointments. Agenda item seven, Council on Aging. Patricia Ballalou, term to, to expire 6-20-2022. Um, if Patricia could come up. And first, I apologize. I'm sure I didn't get your last name right. If you could just say your name correctly. Ballalou. Thank you. Um, for, uh, if you want to just give, speak into the microphone, and um, we're here for an appointment for uh, the Council on Aging. If there's just a little premier or, or you know, basic information you'd like to tell to the board and everyone else about your interest on the Council on Aging, what you hope to accomplish. That's fine. Um, I had never been in the Senior Center until three or four years ago when I started doing taxes there. And I work on the tax program with AARP and about a year ago, I started doing Medicare work. And it's the first time I've really worked with the elderly population and come to understand how important the Senior Center and all of the services it offers really are to the town and to the population. Um, I actually do taxes with the chairman of the committee, Michael Gross, and I volunteered with another member who went through the training for Medicare at the same time that I did and talked to them a little bit about it. And I think this is a very exciting time for that group because of all the activity that's going on in the fundraising. And I would like to be part of that and think I could be helpful. Thank you. Is there a motion? Move approval. By Mr. Second. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd. Um, any questions or comments from my colleagues, Mr. Kiro? <coughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I know that um, uh, Pat has been attending the, the Council on Aging meetings already, and they're very excited to uh, have you aboard. So um, thank, thank you. you very much for stepping up and for volunteering. It's uh, very important. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? Unanimous vote. We also have a Human Rights Commission appointment, Crystal Haynes, term to expi expire 6-30-2022. Good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. Great. Um, if you could just, again, um, whatever you'd like to uh, tell the board about your interest in the Human Rights Commission, uh, things you hope to accomplish, or what attracted you to come to the commission to well, give us your time and expertise. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I moved to Arlington roughly two years ago uh, with my now husband and his family. <laughs> who are here today. And um, I found that as I came into the community, there aren't a lot of folks that 
look like me in this space. And I think it's really important to, for everyone to have exposure to different cultures. I found that in my own neighborhood, when I spoke with my neighbors and knocked on doors and, and introduced myself, I found that having that touch point of being able to have a person you can ask questions about their culture, share their cultures in. We celebrate Kwanzaa in my home, which I'm sure is very new to uh, my family. And I think that that was really a really important moment where I wanted to be able to share that so sort of a cultural competency with an entire community. Um, personally, I work as a, as a journalist, um, I also am pursuing a master's degree in media advocacy. So diversity inclusion is what I live and breathe every single day. And I think that um, it's really important to be the change you wanna see in the world. And I intend on raising my children in this community. I intend on being a member of this community. And so I wanna make sure that I can give all that I know uh, to this community, but also have them receive a certain level of understanding what diversity and inclusion looks like, especially in, in 2019. So I'm really excited to work on the Human Rights Commission to get more multicultural events happening in this community and so that we are just become a little bit closer to one another and are able to share, each other, share one another's stories and ethnic backgrounds, so. Okay, I'm ready to go with you, so just tell me <laughs> what you want me to do. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really excited, um, not only by your th enthusiasm, but certainly your expertise and, and your life experience experiences and what Arlington really is all about. Um, uh, so it, it would be good to have you on there representing. I know you're certainly gonna be um, a force, not to reckon with, but a force in there that's gonna get a lo really a lot of good things done and anything we can do to help you as We've said to other human rights commissioners, anyone on the board uh, or the board in its entirety is available to you. But I'm really excited. I'm, you got Good. me sold on Good. whatever. <laughs> I'm excited too. <laughs> yeah. um, is there a motion by Move Mr. Carroll, seconded second. by Mr. Hurd? Uh, any questions or comments, Mr. Dunn? Uh, just uh, as always, uh, the town runs on volunteers and we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know, any further questions or comments on the a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really can say unanimous, sorry. <laughs> unanimous. Uh, is the individual here for the proclamation National Chiropractic Health Month? Okay. Um, we'll go to agenda item nine for approval. Uh, I will take a motion to table by so moved. Mr. DeCourcy, right. seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, council contacted um, the select board office and asked if we could table this for tonight, but they will be in at a future meeting. Okay. So any further questions or comments on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. I'm going to just do one quick um, item because the manager has to leave us at a time certain. So if my colleagues could indulge me um, agenda item 12, we need to set um, future select board meetings for the months of November and January uh, for the warrant as well as for setting the tax rate and I'm not sure about the water sewer debt shift. So if everyone could get out there, um, tell me, is okay. So we're meeting on October 28th. Correct, so how do we look for November. I haven't even gone on mine. I kept telling anyone else to do. So um, November 4th and 18th, why don't we start there? How does that feel? Um, should be fine. Is that, and, uh, I mean, that is only a week between the October meeting. But, yeah. Do you want to do 11 and 25? I don't know. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 is the Thanksgiving week, so it might be. That's why I was just yeah, saying. So, okay, four and, so four, four and 18. So four and 18. Yeah. Okay. Um, December. <coughs> I think we have to meet. Do you want to do the 9th and 16th? Right. Does that work? Yeah. With the 16th being hopefully the traditional of what we do. And I think that's good for now. And you do, it just you, do you wanted want to go the, into January? No, I was just wondering, it, just making sure that you really wanted the ninth as opposed to the second. When is our last meeting now in, in November? The 18th. Hey, okay, so how, how does, correct, that's better. Does the second and 16th work for everybody? 
I would only say, um, if you want to hold the second, that's great, but give me, if you would allow me the uh, opportunity to come back and say that the ninth is necessary for our tax rate setting schedule. Right. Um, it has to be. I just want to make sure we have that flexibility. It has to be by the ninth, yep. yeah, so. So we'll say two and 16, but it could be yeah. maybe we, maybe combination the thereof. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's set. So 12 is done. Uh, we now have citizens open forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, I see quite a few people have signed up. Um, uh, you're definitely entitled to the three minutes, but if you hear your point made perhaps two or three times because there are other agenda items on there. Um, and um, I met with Elizabeth Dre and she made a very good point of something that I assumed just because I know what everybody else knows it and that's not a correct assumption. If for some reason by choice or because of the uh, amount of time there's more that you wanted to say or enter into the record, please feel free to give uh, that statement or uh, that statement to Mrs. Kropelka and will become part of the official record. Uh, so first we have um, Pat Riley. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you for having me here or allowing me to speak and for everything that you guys do because within my time in Arlington, I have seen all the hard work that you done. Um, I've been living in Arlington for over 25 years. I like living in Arlington. Um, in that time, I've, this is very short, I've seen our town grow, provide additional services and support to our residents, which I really appreciate. We even have innovative programs that the police department has started on drug uh, addiction. In a past life, I was a lobbyist, hard to believe since I'm reading this, right? Um, <laughs> I learned that everything I did in my personal life reflected as my professional life. Um, you know what I mean, I know you do. Uh, my driving record, conversations at the coffee shop, anything I ever wrote could be seen as Pat Riley the lobbyist, not Pat Riley who lives in the Heights in Arlington. Um, and it reflected as though I had done it in my professional capacity, professional life. I had personal views, and if I wanted to talk about those, I had to be really careful where, um, how, where would, you know, how would it be viewed by someone else? And at the time, I was working at the state legislature, and you never knew when there was a reporter there. So there's very much of a public persona in the jobs that we do and that you deal with every day. Um, I think this is all why I I'm, don't understand what Lieutenant Vedrini's uh, actions did. As an individual, he has absolutely every right to have his personal views. I may not agree with them, but those are his personal views and he has a right to do that. As a, as a police officer, his personal views will never be seen as anything but a professional life as a police officer. He chose to work as a police officer here in Arlington. Um, everything he says or writes uh, reflects on us, representing all of us. And writing his personal views in such a public manner surprised me because um, it reflects on the town, our police department, you, me, the rest of the residents. And I was just surprised when I actually read the article. I have great respect for the police department and those that run it. Um, however, I ask that uh, the lieutenant no longer represent the town that I know and love. Um, and I ask that he no longer uh, represent us in any public uh, forum or capacity. So that's all I had to say and I really appreciate the time and thank you. Thank you. And um, I just want to say to um, the remaining 35 people, which is going to, oh I didn't think I did that, I'm sorry. I thought I hit the stopwatch. Um, there will be, which the manager and the select board has committed to, a community meeting where you all can come in 
um, and we can have this conversation facilitated by an appropriate person with um, the necessary um, stockholders, people who really need to be here. In terms of a personal, and I, I can keep saying this, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, there's no recourse the select board can do regarding any per person who's hired, fired, promoted. Um, and, and, and I say that with all due respect. And, and, and I feel like, you know, by going through this, everybody's leaving really frustrated and perhaps not heard as much as they want to. And I'm not trying to use that as an excuse. I'm also a court reporter. But um, I would, will say that um, you're free to come up, but you know, the individual employee question, that is more appropriate at that future community meeting. Um, for us to have a two-hour citizens open forum on that when there's really nothing that we can do um, except for, wait for two hours to get to the remaining hour and a half of our agenda. So if you could kind of bear that in mind. Um, I know the manager is committed to um, holding that community meeting. Um, we've all had those conversations with him, you know, with an appropriate facilitator. Plus. Um, other points um, that was, I haven't seen the petition yet, but of the five points, we, we've agreed to do four of them. You know, firing that particular individual, this is nothing, um, it's not back and forth yet, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make it so, you know, no, I two more hours that. onto yeah. the, this, it's just, yep. it's and frustrating it, it for not, everybody. And we want it that way, not so I'm to trying to say mentality. the group asked for five things, you're getting four. <coughs> the fifth one, firing Pedrini, that's really not on the table. In this venue. Yes. So, and okay. I'll leave others to speak to that. So thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Next I have oh, Kim K. Holt. Sorry. <laughs> My glasses didn't work. Would, do you want a chair? No, I'm fine. Thank okay. you. I'll stand. Thank you for offering though, Dan. Um, okay. So I'm Kim K. Holt, and hello. And I think most of you know me. I'm not sure if you do, Steve. Um, but I've run youth programs in this town for over 15 years. I think most of you are aware of who I am. Um, and I am here to talk about Lieutenant Pedrini, and I need to talk here at the select board. I have not been here for the other meetings. I was actually in the hospital most of the summer. I was in the hospital again the last select board meeting. So I need to speak here. And I need to say first and foremost that it made me so upset I cried for hours when I heard that this group was told they were being divisive. Let me tell you what was divisive. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Pedrini's writings were divisive, and the people on the Arlington list, and you read that list, who attacked me and attacked other people who were saying this was not okay, and the people who were saying it was not okay were personally viciously attacked on that list. That was divisive, and what's happening in this community is divisive. We are not being divisive, we are asking for healing. And if you haven't read that list, and I plan to send you all a long letter by this weekend, I was personally sexually assaulted by the leader in a town, a city outside this state when I was in college. And I reported it, and I was so harassed by the police afterwards that I had to flee, take a failing semester in college, and go to another state. I have felt relatively safe in this town. I still am a little afraid any time I have to interact with the police, although I knew Fred Ryan well. But in any way, I was a little afraid any time I interacted with the police. I live in a housing corp affordable housing building. I have been a spokesperson for mental illness on the state and federal level. So I'm well identified as that. And people get killed with mental illness by police in this country when they interact with the police. So there's a little bit of fear, and I've had a lot of occasion to call the police in recent years. I had a woman living in my building who's very disabled, who was being abused very seriously. She now has had her husband removed and a restraining order. But that was happening, and the dispatcher often acted like I was causing an issue when I called. The police were generally very nice, okay? So I've had a little bit of fear. After the Padrini thing, I don't have a little bit of fear. I'm very afraid. Okay, I had to call the police several times because of a new neighbor, and one time we found out that she was stone cold out, passed out, couldn't be woken up. They had to call an ambulance. They were in and out of my building for hours through my apartment to get to her back door. When I called that night because somebody was ringing her doorbell over and over and over again, it's a small building, and I, the girlfriend has a husband, the daughter has a husband who's abusive and comes to the door every once in a while and stuff. It's the middle of the night. I wasn't going to that door. I have PTSD. I'm not going to that door in the middle of the night. I called the police. I was very afraid. 
Very afraid. I was never like that before this, this training. Guys, meeting. thank you. This is real, guys. Thank you. Uh, and thank we're you. asking for healing. Thank and you. we're not the I, ones I, being divisive. Thank you. Again. Next, we have, <coughs> God bless you, Esther Kingston Mann. Is Esther here? There's guys over there. <coughs> Hello, my name is Esther Kingston Mann. Uh, I lived in Arlington for about 30 years, and I really love the town. Um, but uh, I came here to speak tonight. Um, I'm speaking in the name of people of color that I know who feel less safe living out their lives as residents of this town as a result of Officer Pedrini's attack on people with addiction problems, the mentally ill immigrants, um, social justice warriors, and I actually feel this a bit myself personally because at my best, I'm a social justice warrior. I appeal to the committee to listen to the people, to the vulnerable people who say they feel threatened. When people say they feel unsafe, I appeal to you to take them seriously. Each person in Arlington who falls into the categories that Padrini viciously describes, specifically these drug-addicted um, people, uh, uh. mentally ill immigrants, each of these people um, belong to families, have friends, and all of them can be counted among those who are harmed by the kind of hatred that Officer Pedrini expressed. So I, I'm speaking here tonight for myself partly, but mostly for people I know who have trust issues with the town and who do not speak up publicly for fear of retribution and for their safety. So I, and I guess others here, ask the town to pay attention to the damages to public trust that Officer Pedrini has caused. Thank you. Carrie Thiel. Uh, Chair members of the, co of the committee, of the board, I should say. Harry Teal, 11 Lakeview Street. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you for putting my correspondence on the meeting agenda tonight uh, regarding the, the traveling animal exhibit issue. I wanted to let you know that I will be here um, to answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, I also want to um, thank um, Administrator Kaprelka, uh, Diane Welch, our fantastic ACO, who I, I had really productive conversations with. I want to thank several of you who took the time to speak to me personally about this issue, which I'm grateful for. Uh, you all know I have deep reservations to this day um, about uh, uh, a traveling animal exhibit coming to Arlington, animal welfare concerns, public safety concerns, values concerns. Um, but I've tried to find a solution that's forward-looking um, and that really um, just acknowledges uh, and hopefully pushes forward um, our commitment as a town to animal welfare uh, and also gives a space for uh, some legitimate policy issues that are already being addressed by the town. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be constructive. Um, I, I'm still interested in the town meeting process and I, I've spoken to uh, Mr. Hyman about that who's been, again, extremely helpful. So I just wanted to thank you for, for giving this space and let you know that, that I'm here tonight if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Maria Miser. Hi. I'm Maria Miser. Um, I'd like to speak today in support of having uh, an, featuring an animal adoption event at Arlington Town Day instead of the uh, traveling farm animal exhibit. Uh, I believe that that is 
an exploitative demonstration of animals in our community, and I'd rather see um, I'd rather see an event there that um, demonstrates that our community should be caring for animals, uh, loving animals, um, supporting them, rescuing them. It should be raising, helping to raise awareness about animal homelessness, and I think that that would be much more appropriate and positive for the town of Arlington. And I have been volunteering for animal rescue groups for many years, and I've personally volunteered at adoption events, so I'd love to support this personally, volunteer, participate in it. So that's all, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to continue on with this list, but at some point, just because we have two other agenda items um, that I'm imagining those two people, um, Brucey Moulton and the traffic rules and order, um, probably anticipating they have a two hour wait. So th they'll be pretty short term. So I'm gonna take a few more speakers, um, go to agenda item 10 and 11. And of course, they're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting and citizens open forum. I just wanna be respectful of their time. And again, reiterate, there is this is not the community meeting that um, the manager has committed to in the, in the select board. You know, this is citizens open forum to, to bring issues. Um, I won't say it again because it's, I guess I can't get the message across that, you know, the venue that you're seeking um, with the professionals that we need there and outside consultants is going to happen. So uh, next, I think she might have signed up because she didn't realize she's an agenda item. But if she wants to speak again, she can. Crystal Haynes, I believe she's left. She was a new human rights commissioner. Um, Christine Dorchek. Good evening. Thank you very much for hearing me, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Christine Dorchak and I, I live on Lakeview Street. I'm the president and general counsel of Grade 2K USA Worldwide. We're a nonprofit organization that works to pass laws to protect greyhounds. I'm not here in my organizational capacity, but my professional position is relevant to what I'm here to say tonight. In 2008, my organization passed a ballot measure called the Greyhound Protection Act. This passed very handily across the state, but Arlington in particular had some of the highest numbers of any of the cities or towns across the Commonwealth. It was for this reason and others that we chose to move our organization to Arlington several years ago. It's with that understanding that there are humane-minded people who care about animals that I think you need to really think hard about bringing animal <laughs> praise back to Town Day or any other event here in Arlington. This is an organization that has failed inspections. This is an organization that has been thrown out of another city for animal cruelty violations. This is not a good actor. In fact, I understand in its own application to you, it represented that it was USDA certified. I'm an animal protection attorney. I can tell you there is no such designation. So given the misleading conduct of this organization, I strongly urge you not to bring them back for any other events. And also, I'd like to point out one other issue, which probably hasn't been brought up yet, but there's a liability issue. If someone is hurt by one of these animals or in interaction with one of these employees, who some of whom have been discharged for misconduct, according to the record, there's liability that will be part of the Arlington come into our neighborhood, we'll have legal expenses, embarrassment, and this is not something we want. So I would like to join with the other speakers in urging this board to please don't bring back animal craze. Let's, let's consider a humane alternative, and let's not turn a blind eye to the cruelty and corruption of animal craze. Thank you for hearing my points tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lynette Martin. Good evening. My name is Lynette Martin, 18 Eustace Street. This week marks the one year anniversary of the publication of Lieutenant Pedrini's hate speech. We are here today to formally submit our petition asking the town to develop and announce a plan for repairing community trust by November 1st. 
We will continue to collect signatures until that date, but as of now, we have over 1,000 signatures, including over 15% of Arlington's town meeting members and well over two dozen respected social justice organizations. It has been one month since the residents first came to these chambers to express our concerns about the town's accountability in this case. During that meeting, Mr. Dunn assured us that the CBI report was just the first step. Mr. Hurd expressed his surprise that you all had not heard from us sooner. Ms. Mahone and others emphasized that they could not address this personnel matter in these chambers, even as you placed it on your own agenda and proceeded to express full confidence in the town manager's handling of the case thus far. Despite the serious reservations citizens brought to this very room, it has been three weeks since the CBI report came out and there has been no commentary whatsoever from town leadership regarding the report or next steps. It has been one year, one year since the racist words were published, and no attempt has been made to address the populations that Lieutenant Pedrini targeted with his words. Let's move past this forum. Concerned citizens have been provided no other forum but the three minutes each here. We have been provided no avenue for back and forth, no opportunity for town leadership to respond to our feedback or to address accountability issues that have arisen in our well-documented concerns. I'll remind the audience that the town manager did not take any part in part of the CBI report discussions. When are he or the board or any town leaders going to address our questions? This week marks one year. The CBI report contains 50 suggestions but fails to prioritize them, potentially enabling the town to cherry pick easy asks and ignore the harder ones. Over half of the stakeholders involved in the report prioritized five asks that were not highlighted in the report. The primary ask being that Lieutenant Pedrini remain on permanent administrative assignment if termination is demonstrated to not be possible. I've heard several of you ask, why aren't we, we hear, hearing from those targeted in Lieutenant Pedrini's articles? You won't hear from these vulnerable people until leadership demonstrates that they're worthy of hearing those voices. I hope you will listen carefully to some of those voices tonight. Many of the people involved in this cause have heard from scared people who don't feel safe going to the police, who've thanked those who've spoken up to say that this, this isn't right, who've said, I don't feel safe coming forward, but thanks for being an ally. These residents need to hear from town leadership that Arlington has their back and that they're safe. The town's message has consistently been, we want this to go away so we can be perceived as a good place again. Let's get rid of the division. Our message to you today is we don't want to look good, we want to do good and stand by all Arlington citizens. Silence creates division, action creates healing. Please take action and stand by the side of those who were harmed. Please do not let the heinous words of one police officer ruin the reputation of many Arlington police officers. Thank you. Thank you. You can submit the rest. Um, we've been doing this a little over half hour, so I'm going to um, take care of the last two remaining items um, in our agenda and then come back to this. And, and those two, number 10 and 11, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, I'm going to do what I just said. Um, if if I, I don't have anything on here, I apologize. Um, agenda item 10, request to sign non-binding resolution in support of an act for utility transition to using renewable energy future act. Uh, Mr. Madam DeCourcy. Chair, yeah, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion. It, uh, I do some work in my professional capacity for National Grid. This involves a discussion of natural gas issues, so I'm, I'm going to recuse myself and come back after the agenda item. Definitely. Thank you. Brucey, just name and address for the record. Yes, Brucey Moulton, uh, Precinct 12, 164 Situate Street. And um, I don't, should I uh, cover the material that I previously covered, or how would you like me to proceed? A um, quick summary? Yeah, a quick summary and then sort of the next step after you get the proclamation where you'll be submitting it and what you're hoping it will help generate or support. Yeah. Okay. So um, we are here, as you said, for, to, uh, and first of all, I'm here on behalf of Mothers Out Front and the Arlington team of Mothers Out Front and also Sustainable Arlington. And I would just like to ask the Mothers Out Front from the Arlington team who are here to stand up for a moment. Um, this is something that... <laughs> Thank you for all your activities. I do appreciate it. We um, all do. And uh, so the Act for Utility Transition to Using Renewable Energy, uh, otherwise known as the FUTURE Act, sponsored by Sin Senator Cynthia Cream and Representatives Lori Ehrlich and Christina Minicucci, 
and co-sponsored by all three of Arlington state legislators, Senator C Cindy Friedman, Representative Sean Garbley, and David Rogers. Massachusetts has the second oldest distribution, gas distribution infrastructure in the United States. It is beset with leaks. Those leaks waste consumers' money. We pay for all the lost gas in Massachusetts. Those leaks pollute our air with toxic chemicals that are bad for our health, continually release the greenhouse gas methane, which is a potent driver of climate change, kill nearby trees, and occasionally cause explosions. In Massachusetts, the cost of replacing the oldest, especially leak-prone pipes, runs to billions of dollars. The estimate is about nine billion, I believe. Experience with the new plastic pipe being used to replace old cast iron and steel shows that it breaks more easily. In fact, We've already had some serious gas leaks resulting from the breaking of those plastic pipes. Fixing leaks and replacing gas lines takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money, and you're still left with a system that will continue to leak. There is no way that you can have all those pipes coupled together and not have leaks. And that system is transporting an explosive product with hazardous contaminants. Right here in Arlington, we can see from the last several years that even with gas leak repairs and some pipe replacement, the number of gas leaks has increased from 177 in 2016 to 313 this year. And those are just the leaks <coughs> that National Grid has reported. Um, we know from, other re from research that there are more. The situation is similar across the state wherever there is gas distribution infrastructure. To quote Lori Ehrlich, one of the Future Act sponsors, it makes no sense to keep burning an explosive gas in our homes when it is putting both us and the climate in danger. The Future Act was written to respond in the short term to the dangers of living with gas and in the longer term to move everyone in our state, including the gas utilities, off gas and onto renewable sources of energy. The Future Act provides for triage and transition. Triage in the short term strengthens safety standards for existing gas lines <laughs> and regulations for identifying and responding to gas leaks. Transition is creating a path for gas utilities in Massachusetts to move away from selling gas and to selling alternative renewable energy sources. The Future Act provides support for municipalities as well as for the gas utility industry. We know they're an important player in, in our state economy. We're not, the goal is not to, to kneecap them, but to help them move to the future. Massachusetts, if passed, the Future Act would make Massachusetts the first state with a roadmap for gas utilities to make this kind of change to renewable energy. The technologies already exist to make this possible. Geothermal microgrids can provide heating and cooling for local networks of buildings, residential, commercial, and industrial. And in fact, um, the Gas Leaks Allies, um, we're very fortunate by, to have a member of the Gas Leaks Allies, Ed Wall, here tonight who's been part of writing the legislation. Uh, the Gas Leaks Allies, are hosting a technical event at Boston University on October 28th. The all-day event for 150 people is, will be tech, deeply technical in nature. It will include people from formerly in the gas and, and oil industry who have figured out that drilling for, he, for geothermal heat makes a lot of sense, and they have installed some of these geothermal microgrids and they're up and functioning. They're going to be on hand to talk about that. In the evening, there'll be a lot larger event also at Boston University for 300 people. I look forward to extending invitations. Um, so Massachusetts communities that have already signed a resolution in support of the Future Act include Brookline, Cambridge, Lincoln, Newton, and Somerville. Other communities in the process of considering such a re resolution include Acton, Boston, Hopkinton, Wellesley, Wellfleet, and Worcester. 
it is my hope um, that uh, I, I haven't gone into the specific supports for municipalities. It includes uh, rapid um, inform, uh, informing of the local police chief as soon as leaks are found, an expedited uh, schedule for repairing leaks, more winter patrols of, of, of pipelines <coughs> under our streets because the freezing of the ground causes the pipes to shift and increases the number of le the potential for leaks. Um, it offers the communities a greater uh, ease in uh, getting paid back for the loss of street trees that die from gas leaks and, and so forth. There, there are a number of of uh, advantages for municipalities, and they are laid out in the, one of the attachments that you received um, with, with the resolution. So it is my hope that um, in coming before you tonight that um, you will be able to uh, sign this resolution, um, in this non-binding resolution, in uh, support of the principles of the Future Act. Um, if you have any questions, um, Mr. Wall would be glad to, to address. If you have technical questions that I can't <laughs> answer, Mr. Wall would be glad to answer them for you. Thank you. Is there a motion? I, I move approval of the, the uh, resolution as uh, presented. Moved by Mr. Carroll, second. seconded by Mr. Hurd. Um, with tradition, we read into the record our proclamations, and I, I know it's a little bit voluminous, but I also know Mother's out front, and your members have put a, a lot of months, if not years, into um, what's contained in uh, the proclamation. So um, I'm going to read it into the record. Resolution in support of Massachusetts House Bill 2849, Massachusetts Senate Bill 1940, an act for utility transition to using renewable energy, the Future Act, whereas the Select Board of the Town of Arlington committed in 2010 to preparing for the impact of climate change and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the Commonwealth by the year 2050 to at least 80% of the 1990 level as required by the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2008, and whereas the Town of Arlington has joined the Metropolitan Mayor's Coalition adopting its goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2050, and whereas the Town of Arlington has constituted the Clean Energy Future Committee under the direction of the Town Energy Manager to guide the town in achieving its net zero by 2050 goal, and whereas the Town of Arlington participates in the Massachusetts Municipal Vulnerability Program to prepare for and become resilient in the face of local impacts of climate change, and whereas the Arlington Select Board is resolved to support the earlier gas consumer cost protection bill, House 2870, by vote in 2015, and whereas the Town of Arlington has one of the older natural gas infrastructures in the Commonwealth with hundreds of gas leaks beneath its streets leaking methane into the atmosphere, and whereas gas leaks contain 95% methane, a greenhouse gas that is 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. <clears throat> Sorry. Whereas methane from gas leaks damages or kills Arlington street trees, trees which improve the quality of life of Arlington's residents, provide protection for, the Arlington, for town residents against extreme heat and stormwater flooding, and increase property values and the town property tax base. Whereas the town of Arlington has already submitted several claims to the gas utility national grid for the loss of public trees <coughs> that have died as the result of leaking gas distribution lines. And whereas the town of Arlington can reasonably expect to submit additional such claims for public trees killed by gas leaks, and whereas an aging fracked gas infrastructure poses serious health and safety risks, as evidenced by the explosions in the Merrimack Valley in September of 2018, whereas the September 13, 2019 report, Rolling the Dice Assessment of the Gas System Safety in Massachusetts, written by Bob Ackley, Molly Fairchild, Sarah Griffith, Nathan Phillips, PhD, and Regina LaRoque, MD, MPH, GasLeaksAllies.org, identifies quote, multiple problems and hazards and continuing to rely on an explosive gas as an energy source as well as the Commonwealth's commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions dramatically over the coming decades and makes over 50 recommendations towards a strategy of triage and transition. Triage reduced short-term risks to safety, health, and property by enhancing statewide gas leak classification standards and prioritizing the largest and most hazardous leaks for repair, not pipe replacement, 
transition, eliminate long-term risks intrinsic to reliance on a combustible gas by deploying a managed, just transition to cleaner, safer, and more cost-effective heating and cooling solutions. And whereas the gas leaks allies reported in its legislative mandates for transitions supports the Future Act as described below and as an effective means for moving the Commonwealth away from fossil fuels, including nat natural gas, and whereas gas companies have not significantly reduced the number of gas leaks and the volume of methane emissions since the passage of Chapter 149 of the Acts of 2014, an act relative to natural gas leaks, requiring them to classify and repair leaks, and ratepayers still pay for the lost gas. Whereas House 2849, Senate 1940, 1940, an act for utility transition to usable renewable energy future acts, focuses on the problems with the distribution of natural gas in the Commonwealth, addressing not only the crumbling infrastructure and immediate safety concerns, but also creating a path forward by avoiding future stranded assets and permitting gas companies to distribute renewable thermal energy, including solar and geothermal, instead of explosive fossil fuel. And whereas the Future Act will empower municipalities to have stronger, safer, more transparent working relationships with the gas companies by improving coordination for gas leak repairs and strengthening safety standards, mandating that the gas companies notify the local fire, and fire chief and police department within an hour of finding a dangerous leak, requiring that the gas companies and the Department of Public Utilities share maps, costs, and plans with municipalities in the public and requiring that gas companies be audited annually for safety, performance, and leaks reports, whereas the Future Act will maintain, mandate, I'm gonna stop that again, whereas the Future Act will mandate that gas leaks within a specified distance of a school zone or building or within the root zone of a tree be fixed within six months, and whereas the Future Act will give municipalities an effective voice in proceedings before the Department of Public Utilities by permitting municipalities to participate in adjudicatory hearings related to their service areas and allowing individuals and municipalities to pursue remedies within the DPU as an alternative to the courts for claim for property damage incurred during which gas company road work as well as damage to trees from gas leaks, and whereas the Future Act will authorize municipalities to procure local or district energy services and to establish an energy micro grid, and whereas the Future Act's legislative co-sponsors co include Sen Senator Cindy F. Friedman and Representative Sean Gobley and Dave Rogers, now therefore be it resolved that the Arlington Select Board go on record in strong support of the principles embodied in the Future Act, House 2849, Senate 1940, and urge the legislature to pass the bill during the 2019-2020 session, and be it further resolved that the town clerk B, and hereby is requested to forward suitably engrossed copies of this resolution to members of Arlington's legislative delegation, as well as to the House Speaker Robert DeLeo, Senate President Karen Spilker, and Governor Charlie Baker, on behalf of the Arlington Select Board, signed by myself, Vice Chair Dan Dunn, uh, Mr. Joseph Kiro, and Mr. John Hurd, with Mr. DeCourcy um, recusing himself. So, uh, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd and Mr. Dunn. I just want to say that um, in general, uh, I think that we should be treading lightly on uh, uh, what to endorse and what not to endorse, and particularly when it comes to, like some things related to specific town policies and procedures, like, or the way the town should be running itself. Those I have absolutely no problem weighing in all the time. This one is obviously farther out from that. Um, but I'm comfortable supporting this one specifically because of the endorsement of a uh, town meeting of very similar ideas. And I just wanted to be really clear what my rationale was for supporting this because there are other ones that people will say, hey, Dan, you should support this in a select board meeting, and I'm going to say no. But this particular one, I can, uh, I can see a very direct line from town <laughs> meeting to this vote, and, and that's why I'm happy to support it. Mr. Carroll? Thank you very much. I, I think your point's well taken, Mr. Dunn, but I, I think as uh, this is laid out before us, we're, we're supporting the principles of the Future Act, and I don't think um, any of us are expected to pass a quiz on every single um, <coughs> line um, that's, that's within the Act. The resolution itself is pretty long. Um, I appreciate the indulgence in putting this off for, for, for two weeks so that we could read the informational materials you, you pass this. I feel very comfortable with this on a number of levels. I mean, yes, town meetings pass things. We actually, this board, when um, uh, <clears throat> the president pulled us out of um, Paris, we, we endorsed the We Are Still In campaign 
as a board to say that we were committed to the, the goals of the, the Paris Accord. I think it's consistent with that. And the successful partnerships we've had with mothers out front, we really appreciate it. I know that we've, we've gone on record with some of the previous gas leaks um, uh, proposals you brought forward to us around gas leaks. We also you know, took some difficult decisions um, uh, uh, around ensuring the safety here uh, during the uh, National Grid lockout um, and in the wake of, of um, the explosions up in the Merrimack Valley. I, I can say that I personally also have appreciated your partnership. Um, I've gone out with my daughter helping with your, your tagging project. So I think that's a, a great service um, to the town. You know, one of the things that's attractive here, I think, for our board new references <laughs> does provide some, if this legislation is to pass, provide some level of um, additional control for the municipality. Yeah. I think it's something that we've all struggled with, with the regulated monopoly, monopolies of the um, <coughs> power utilities, whether it's the gas company or the electric company, we struggle with double poles here. It's very been very difficult for us to find levers for the local community to, to actually exercise some kind of sovereignty uh, there. So I appreciate you bringing it forward. I appreciate all the work. appreciate all the members of Mothers Out Front coming out to, um, to uh, support you here. So thank you very much for bringing that forward. Oh, and, and I, I didn't mention our partnership on CCA, but that's, that's the electrical side of the ledger, right? Well, it all ties together in fighting climate change, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Mr. Hurd. Just thank you for your work on this. This is amazing to bring this forward. It's such an important issue. And all the work that you and your organization does outside of just this one specific piece of legis legislation, it's getting to the point where you can't walk around Arlington, I don't think, and smell gas at some point. And we want to make sure that we're not, we don't get acclimated to it and it gets put in the back, on the back burner. So it's good to know that you guys are out there continuing to fight for this. So thank you. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Thank you again so much. You're very welcome. I'm going to leave um, some flyers about the Rolling the Dice Assessment of Gas System Safety Report. I know you that there's a mention in that in the cover letter. On the back, there's a, information about a gas forum being held in Wellesley. Um, on October 24th, that <coughs> includes uh, Laura, Representative Lori <coughs> Ehrlich, Representative Alice Peisch, and Dr. Nathan Phillips, who's the lead author on the on the report. Thank you, Brucey. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you, oh, Brucey. Uh, we. Get the, yeah. Now we'll go to the last agenda item, 11 Sorry. for approval. Tra okay. Traffic rules and orders. Um, not sure if we have someone here from TAC to speak to this or Mrs. Kropalka or Attorney Heim, who is going to speak under traffic? Were you going to speak under traffic rules and orders? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Paul Schlickman, Precinct Nine, Town Meeting Member Precinct 9 and resident of 47 Mystic Street. Our condo association submitted correspondence to the uh, select board in June regarding a, this uh, recurring problem with the lack of access in and out of Chestnut Terrace. Not only do we share that exit, it's also shared by Chestnut Manor, which has frequent use for emergency vehicles. And the intersection of Chestnut Street and Chestnut Terrace, as well as the municipal parking lot, is consistently blocked. It's, it's impossible to get out of the street most days, even midday Saturday. And I saw the recommendation in your packet it, uh, we wholeheartedly are appreciative of the board, the TAC, uh, Officer Corey, and uh, the work that you've done to implement this. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Heim. Madam Chair, if, you, if you'd like, um, you have three separate recommendations um, from TAC based on three different requests. Uh, each one of them has a fairly straightforward memo recommending a specific uh, vote for action. I think if the board is so inclined that it agrees with all the votes, you could take a single vote, or if you feel like it's important to uh, break them out by um, each individual recommendation, I think you can certainly do that. Um, if, if, is it okay if I take all three requests as a single motion, or should we do them separately? Uh, all three together? So that's uh, for approval, move no parking signs here to corner sign Broadway at Rosson Road. 
Second, stop, stop signs on Washington Street at Candia Street and Crawford Street. Third, do not block intersection sign Chestnut Street at Chestnut Terrace, as submitted by Officer Corey Rateau of our Traffic and Parking Unit. Is there a motion so to moved. approve by Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Seconded by Mr. Curo. Uh, seeing no one else here to speak to it. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn. Seconded by Mr. Curo. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you so much. We'll go back to Citizens Open Forum. Um, Reverend Shalene Bokris, I, I apologize if I'm not, I'm not saying names correctly. Hi, um, Shalene Pokris, 51 Crosby Street. Um, I'm actually gonna finish Lynette, oh sorry, yep. I'm actually gonna uh, finish what Lynette Martin was saying um, because she ran out of time. So she had asked that um, we please take action and stand on the side of those harmed and not take the words of one police officer uh, to let them ruin the reputation of the many fine police officers. Um, Lynette would like everyone to know she was at coffee with a cop last week and one of the officers asked if she was prejudiced against all of our officers. Um, for example, if the crimes of one doctor would keep her from returning to all doctors to get treatment. And um, I'll switch to Lynette's words now. My response was that, was that um, absolutely not. I would continue to trust doctors. I would certainly not return to a medical practice that let one individual doctor who committed a crime keep his license. I would not return to the practice if they let this doctor return to treating patients whom the doctor expressed a hatred toward. If, however, the medical practice named the doctor's crime, censured that doctor, and either fired him or guaranteed targeted patients would never have to interact with that doctor again, then I would respect the organization for their strong stance and support them for their bravery. Please take action and stand on the side of those who were harmed and do not let the words of one police officer ruin the uh, reputation of many fine officers in Arlington. Um, I would also like to read the words of someone who could not be here tonight because as we've stated, there are a lot of people in the community who don't feel safe adding their voices to the chorus of voices you've been hearing from. Um, this is from a transgender person, and um, her name is Aisha, and she wrote, Good morning, Laura. Thanks for thinking of me. I'm actually working late today, and I'd appreciate it if you would read the below at the meeting. I live on Lake Street in Arlington. I'm a transgender activist and exactly the kind of person Rick Pedrini had in mind when he wrote his screed advocating that police meet violence with violence. This kind of language bears striking similarity to the r rash of manifestos written by disaffected white men who have carried out mass shootings in the last several years. Knowing he still has a job with the Arlington Police Force is a slap in the face, a clear statement that the Arlington leadership is more concerned about pandering to the thin blue line than protecting the citizens that men like Pedrini have called to harm. The fact that he was reinstated using restorative justice circle, in quotes, is a total perversion of a system that activists have been working on for decades. The initial role of the AHRC in Pedrini's reinstatement was, has delegitimized the Human Rights Commission. The restorative justice process in Arlington and the Arlington Town Manager, it has also established that I cannot trust any of the town's governing bodies because they have demonstrated a willful, disre willful disregard for my safety and humanity. And I just ask everyone to keep in mind, this is from a transgender person in our community. If the goal of this town is to reestablish trust in the community, then the first step must be to permanently remove Rick Pedrini from the police force. A police and a government committed to equity and justice will accept nothing less. Thank you. Lynette Calvel, <coughs> sorry, Lynette Calvel, Culver House. I'm getting stuck on my words. Hi, my name is Lynette Culverhouse. I live on Draper Ave. I've been an Arlington resident since 1984. And, you know, I really hope that you've been grappling with this issue as deeply as we have. I want to tell you where we're coming from because from some of the comments we have heard from town leaders, we are being labeled as divisive. But in fact, we have been nothing but respectful in all our attempts to communicate the urgency we feel to you and other town leaders. Please understand that people become angry when an injustice has occurred. It is not divisive to express anger. Rather, it is a plea to be heard. 
What becomes divisive is when the voices expressing opposition or outrage are silenced or pushed aside or otherwise labeled in a negative way. You are sitting in a seat of power. I'm afraid I'm feeling like the people in power in Arlington are more concerned with avoiding being vulnerable along with the rest of us by not admitting mistakes or sincerely seeking to work with us to set things right. Decisions have been made and conversations have been had behind closed doors. We have an openly racist police officer in the heart of our town, which must surely taint the reputation of not only the APD, but also the town leadership. And we are supposed to accept that a very inadequate letter of apology is enough to get back to business as usual. We are left in the dark about what restorative therapy or steps are being taken to address Padrini's particular brand of hate and anger. Who are you leaders protecting? Padrini and his family? Yourselves? An image? Or are you able and willing to step out of your comfort zone and become a voice with your fellow citizens for justice and integrity by standing for and addressing the concerns of all citizens? Strong leadership demands that each person speak up when an injustice occurs. It is not about standing together or defending your position when your leadership comes into question. It is about having the courage to speak up for what you truly believe is morally right, no matter what position your fellow leaders are taking. We need to hear from you publicly as individuals in order to regain our trust in your leadership. We teach our children how not to be bystander when bullying occurs. Racism and hate towards people for belonging to a particular group is a systemic form of bullying. We are seeing it at the highest echelons of our government, so little wonder that we are seeing it here. Facing our own biases and racism is hard work, but an essential piece of work that each person, in particular those in leadership, needs to do in order to achieve justice and embrace the values this town claims to stand for. Thank you. Not only Padrini and Thank the Thank you. Police I really need to, I'm sorry. You can submit the rest of your statement to Mrs. Kropelka because we have probably one more 39 pe more people. Okay. I just we want to be respectful of everyone else. We are to do the right thing for our community. Okay. Thank you. I would like to see you do that Thank too. Thank you. Thank and you. not be silenced anymore. Thank you. I, I'll reiterate again that this select board um, <coughs> oversight over the town manager, the board administrator, and the comptroller. Um, it, and that's where um, our oversight in terms of promotion, demotion, fire, hiring um, lies. Next we have Lennard Diggins. Len? And there will be a community forum, so I, I can't say that enough. Hi. So a couple weeks ago, I was here to tell you all about the brainstorming session that we had for um, trying to get precinct meetings. Uh, it happened on the 2nd. Uh, and it was a really good turnout. We had about 40, uh, 40 to 50 people uh, turn out, most of them were town meeting members, and, and there was lots of enthusiasm for doing um, the, the spring, I'm sorry, the fall uh, precinct meetings, with the goal being to do these you know, twice a year, and, um, forever. Uh, and, and so um, uh, we're trying to have them uh, between now and Thanksgiving. And so far we have five precincts that are organized, one, three, and five, we're going to have their meeting on the 28th uh, from 6.30 to 8 at uh, the Thompson School. And precincts 12 and 14 are going to have theirs on um, November 6th uh, at the Brackett School. Once again, excuse me, from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. What we're trying to do is get venues that, uh, that are free and so we can get the schools you know, until 8 o'clock you know, and, and on days when the custodians are there. So... I'm here letting people who are watching know about that. We're in the process of organizing or trying to get the other precincts to organize. And so I'm also asking you all to, uh, to help out as you can. Uh, and you're certainly welcome to attend any of the meetings because, I mean, as we know, probably uh, very few people could tell you one or two names of their town meeting members. But um, I'll bet, too, that they probably couldn't name more than one or two um, select board members, so, so uh, it would be good for us to just get out there and interact uh, with people. The, the theme pretty much for the fall meetings are going to be pre how government 
you know, works in letting people know I mean, how town meeting works, I mean, how they can become a town meeting member, uh, how to maybe get an article uh, on the warrant. So uh, this may be a long haul you know, to get to the point where I mean, people really are expecting these meetings to happen, but, but um, I got a few years left, so I'm gonna keep pushing this. I just also wanna say that you know, I may be the face of this, you know, but it wouldn't work if it weren't for the existence of Envision Arlington. He, they are the structure that is really helping facilitate this. And I can't say enough good things about Julie Brazil. And, uh, I mean, her energy level is just something else. And so I want to thank her for all her support on this. So uh, thanks. Thanks, Len. Reverend Mata Flanagan. Greetings. I'm Marta Flanagan. I have written the select board and I've met with Adam and I've been grateful and very impressed with those of you who have responded. Thank you. The congregation I have served these last 10 years is one of the most active in town. First Parish is self-supporting and self-governing. It runs much like town meeting. It is cumbersome. There is dissent. There are multiple interests and worthy concerns. You know the drill. The elected governing board of First Parish voted to sign the petition that you are receiving tonight. They voted unanimously. That means something. I'm here as a religious person. I traverse the world of confession and repentance of forgiveness and repair. Here is what I know. Forgiveness requires at least three things. When we have done wrong, we need to hear the other out. We need to come to an understanding of the damage that we have done. That's first. The second is that we need to acknowledge the damage that our words or our deeds have done. And thirdly, we need to engage in some reparational act. I do not make light of what Lieutenant Richard Pedrini wrote. He spoke of maggot criminals. He wrote, it's time we forget about restraint, measured responses, procedural justice, de-escalation, stigma reduction, and other feel-good BS. Let's meet violence with violence and get the job done. Since he posted those words and worse, Lieutenant Pedrini has listened to a few people in a closed restorative justice process. Then he wrote a letter that did not convey enough understanding of the harm caused by his words. And he has yet to engage in actions that repair the damage done. This is reason enough to restrict his work as a police officer but the matter has grown larger than one officer. You and I are leaders in our town, and we are implicated in this as well. In the last year, we have not listened enough or in enough venues to those harmed by his words. We have not done enough to acknowledge the damage done expressing exasperation in word or facial expression when people speak does not help heal the wound. And we have not engaged in enough actions to repair what has been done. Thank you, Reverend. Appreciate it. I just have to be respectful of everyone else's time. Uh, next we have Laura, Laura Kiesel. Would you like a chair? Um, I'll be okay for just a couple of minutes. Laura Kiesel, 260 Massachusetts Avenue. My stepfather used to beat me regularly when I was a child, for years. But this ended one day when I was eight when my maternal uncle, my godfather, found out about the beatings and put an abrupt end to the abuse. My uncle was my hero, but according to Pedrini, because my uncle was someone who also struggled with substance abuse disorder, he was nothing more than a maggot. It was an officer who also undoubtedly shared this same mindset who beat my uncle so brutally upon his arrest that he had to be hospitalized and require surgery. 
My uncle was incarcerated afterwards and would be released five years later, broken and forever changed until he died a year later in our home of a fatal overdose. And yet, when I met with the town manager in early March after he announced restorative justice for Padrini, he said he was not even aware that Padrini's columns targeted those with addiction that the town manager could not be bothered to read the columns in their entirety before proposing a so-called solution has made it clear the very priorities of the town leadership, and it is not the vulnerable people without power. In Chapdelaine's open letter to the town, there was no mention of anyone in the restorative circles from the addiction community or their loved ones, nor did any of the anti-bias trainings he listed include anything that addressed addiction, disability, or mental illness, all populations targeted by Padrini's hate speech and who comprised the bulk of those imprisoned and victimized by police violence in our nation. Yet this board unanimously voted to fully endorse Mr. Chapdelaine's handling of this matter, and by extension, his disregard for and exclusion of those of us whose lives and families have been destroyed by not just addiction, but more so by the racist and classist drug war that continues to this day and is encapsulated by Padrini's position. It is a drug war that usually doesn't target suburban middle-class whites that are now disproportionately impacted by our current opioid epidemic. Poor people like my uncle, and especially poor people of color, are not those extended empathy or understanding when they suffer the same affliction, as was painfully illustrated by this case. Up until only a few weeks ago, Lieutenant Padrini still liked and advertised pages on his personal Facebook page that mocked and degraded addicts and applauded police brutality against them. I know because I spent an hour looking through these pages. Whether or not Padrini acts on his words or beliefs, he will likely have influenced and emboldened other officers who will take it upon themselves to assault or kill someone else's brother, father, or uncle. More will now die of overdoses due to a valid fear that stops them from seeking assistance with the APD or other resources through the town. And the town's leadership is complicit in this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mary Rossoni. Mary Rossoni, please. We still have about another 28 people, so. Mary Fusoni, 90. Mary Fusoni, I'm sorry, I said Rusoni. I haven't oh. started your time yet. Mary Fusoni. Okay. Um, I am here today to read a letter from another town resident, and I'll let uh, that person explain in the letter uh, why they are not here. I'll read half the letter, and my husband will read the, read the rest. I am writing this letter anonymously because I am not prepared to publicly state my name and address in front of a television camera or a news reporter. I am not prepared to make a target of my family for the less stable Padrini supporters in our community to attack. Over the years, we have repeatedly seen that there are people in our town who have no hesitation in targeting minorities for abuse, be it through online harassment or terrorizing us in our schools and homes. This town is small enough that we don't need to use all six degrees to find anyone. As a longtime African-American resident of Arlington, I have closely watched how the town leadership has conducted itself regarding the Padrini matter. What I am left with is the grudging belief that you have neither the inclination nor the ability to protect my family were I to step forward. And so I don't. Simply, the people of color in this community won't speak out because we don't think we will receive anything beyond reassuring noises. More talk about bringing the community together to heal at a cost too steep to bear. Mr. Kiro, you spoke quite passionately about how angry you feel, angry that a person of authority and influence, quote, saw fit to so sully the uniform of the APD. Well, sir, I too am angry, but I am angry because I am afraid, which is something beyond simple indignation. This fear is something that I am forced to feel every day in my bones while still having to live in my skin. The fear that the racist members of Arlington have been further empowered by this man's words at a time when our climate is more dangerous than ever for people like me. Mr. Curo, you spoke at length about what you are not allowed to do. I ask you to speak now. What will you and the select board do to make Arlington a safe place for people like me to call home? Select Chair, you spoke of the deep frustration you feel 
particularly for a group of people whose actions you find, quote, divisive. I, too, wish to express my frustrations because language like that which you employed is materially responsible for people of color not feeling safe enough to speak out. It is precisely the kind of response we expect from white people unwilling to face difficult truths like systemic racism, coded violence, microaggressions, and white privilege. This group of people that you would shame and deride, I hold up to praise for their acts of conscience, their willingness to place themselves in the line of fire before me as true allies will do. These people are the best tool in your arsenal for getting to the point you say you want, moving past this. So I ask, how will you act now to show yourself an ally for the people of color in this community? Thank you. I, I've given you a little more time, actually, so thank you. Uh, Stanley Pollock. Hi, I'm Stanley Pollock, and I live in uh, 94 Grandview Road, Arlington. And I'm going to finish the uh, letter that my wife began. Town ma manager, I really feel for you that you found yourself thrust so sudden and unwillingly into a position no one would wish for, that of tackling overt white supremacy from a town employee in a position of trust and power. You attempted to act quickly in a manner you felt would best protect the town for which you are to be commended. Unfortunately, your decision to prioritize the possible anger of one white man effectively dismissed the real, very real and justified concerns of thousands of people of color and their allies in and around our town. Worse still is that I expected nothing else. I expected you to fail us because it is so rare that anyone answers such a question the right way the first time. Sadly for all of us, the second time is usually the result of a far more tragic event. Let us all help hope your prior decisions do not lead us to it. The choice, is, the choice before you now is how to redress past harms so that all of us feel we can move forward. I offer this suggestion for you. The first step to solving any problem is admitting that you have one. You cannot heal an illness you will not name. Your condemnation for the lieutenant's <laughs> words you've made plain, but I have yet to hear you call it what it is in any public manner. That mess makes me mistrust your sincerity. Through my lifelong exposure to racist thoughts and racist acts, I have been forced to learn many things. Chief among them is this. No racist will speak their mind freely and openly unless they first believe themselves in a place where their words will be welcomed. Whether or not the lieutenant believes the words he wrote is re irrelevant. The fact remains that he did so because he believed others would accept them, not chide him for them. His words were written for those who believe them. Thirteen years ago, the FBI issued a warning about the infiltration of white supremacist groups in police departments across the nation, to which African Americans responded, tell us something we don't know. The question before the town is not if there are any white supremacists in the APD, but how many. Is this a case of one bad apple, as many would like to believe, or is it the fruit of the poison tree? This may feel harsh to you, but that is the source of the fear in my bones, that like mice, that one you see hides the dozens more you don't. Dealing with that question honestly in an open and public manner is necessary to healing our community so dearly needs. Please, for all our sakes, move past your fears of calling the racist things people say and do racist, and we will follow you. Show us that the lieutenant is no longer a threat to our community, is genuinely reformed and not just passing lip service. Adopt the Civilian Reboard, uh, Review Board Seek full bias evaluation and remediation from outside, unaffiliated resources that are run by people of marginalized communities. And above, above all, stop using words that leave people of color feeling locked out of the conversation. There are many resources out there to help you, several of whom now sit before you in this room. Yours in love and peace. Thank you. And I'll just reiterate with the petition of, of the five requests all for the select board town manager have committed to um, doing and are taking actions to do that. So, um, Eli, Ally Gerzon. Madam Chair, may I? Yes. Um, just uh, a note for the audience. Um, folks are allowed to record anything they want, but the open meeting law 
uh, requires that before folks start recording, I know it seems silly because we're on ACMI, but when you're going to record something and you've got a right to do it, just please let the chair know so the chair can inform the audience that folks are being video recorded. Um, I know it sounds a little bit silly, but it's something that the open meeting law requests that we do. And I'll take that. Um, Mr. Attorney Heim pointed out. Thank you. Okay, you ready? Ready? Yeah. I'm going to start. That's fine. Um, my name is Ellie Gerzon. I live on Mass Ave in East Arlington. People with dis I'm going to read from an article um, from the Disability Policy Consortium. People with disabilities are no exception to this. Uh, susceptible to police violence. In fact, a 2016 report by the Rutterman Family Foundation found that although people with disabilities make up between 15 and 20 percent of all Americans, they account for up to half of all those killed by police. Within the disability community, people with mental health diagnosis and development disabilities are some of the groups at highest risk of being injured or killed by police officers. In 2018, at least 21 percent of all people killed by police had a mental health diagnosis of some kind. There have also been a troubling large number of incidents in which deaf people have been killed by police, as in the 2017 death of Marigel Sanchez in Oklahoma City. These deaths are tragic, upsetting, and very often completely needless, the result of officers acting aggressively and without proper training. The way police departments interact with people with disabilities needs to change. Here in Massachusetts, we've seen progress on this front, but also some worrying setbacks. Last year, 180 Massachusetts police chiefs pledged to have their officers take mental health first aid training. And more than 17,000 officers have received training from the NAMI Massachusetts on Mental Health. Despite this, however, concerning issues continue to rise. Like last year, 25-year-old Anthony Calabro, who had a diagnosis of schizophrenia, was shot and killed by police. And 21-year-old Harvard student Salorm Ohene was tackled and punched repeatedly by Cambridge police while apparently experiencing mental health crisis. Meanwhile, while many departments have expressed support for changing practices related to mental health and disability, not everyone within law enforcement feels this way. Last month, the town of Arlington allowed Lieutenant Rick Pedrini, who is still an executive board member of the Massachusetts Police Association, to return to work. He had been put on administrative suspension after writing a series of vindictive columns in which he said, referring to the very measures which are taught in mental health trainings for police officers, it's time we forget about restraint, measured responses, procedural justice, de-escalation, stigma reduction, and other feel-good BS. Let's meet violence with violence. This issue is so ugly and so painful that it is tempting to look away, but there have been too many tragedies for any of us to do so. While individual cases can often be difficult to parse, the overall trend is impossible to ignore. When people with disabilities interact with police, they are disproportionately likely to be killed, and for disabled people of color, the risk is particularly frighteningly high. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next we have Beth Malofchik. After Beth will be Sarah Glover. Hello, Beth Malofchek, uh, Russell Street, and I'm a town meeting member. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. There is a leadership vacuum in Arlington, a moral leadership vacuum. The people have stepped up. A select board member mistook force for leadership. We do not know whether this is an anomaly Deplo deploying police to public meetings, as was revealed in the Freedom of Information Act documents that are posted online. We do not know whether that was an anomaly or a standard operating procedure of the select board and the town manager. We still wait for it to be acknowledged. I would like the remainder of my time to be given to the next person. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going to actually give you your full three minutes okay um, and I'm not going to start it yet after Sarah Glover will be Betty Stone hi good evening Good evening. Um, thanks for having this uh, tonight 
My name is Sarah Glover. I live at 139 Franklin Street. I've been in Arlington for a little over nine years. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that it was a personal experience that kind of jolted me into action on this issue. Though I'd read everything in the, that was being reported in the paper, I kept thinking that you all would immediately have such a firm stance on any expressions like this that I had nothing to worry about. But then I read Lieutenant Petrini's actual letters and became much more alarmed. He comes very close to advocating that police take the law into their own hands. Recently, I was bicycling past an officer on Mill Street, and before any uh, real thinking kicked in, I immediately became fearful that he found me annoying or possibly worse. I'm a bicyclist, and Lieutenant Pedrini takes a moment to share his disdain for people on bikes, among many other groups. As soon as I felt this anxiety, I realized how privileged I am and felt real shame. I can get off my bike any day of the week, but if my skin was a different color, or I didn't speak English, or I was employed by Black Lives Matter, I couldn't hop out of those identities so easily. Have any of us who are white really understood what it would be like to be disparaged by somebody who has a gun and the law on his side? I went to the Coffee with Cops event last week and had several really wonderful conversations with the officers there. Um, I enjoyed it very much. They weren't all wonderful conversations, though, and that's another thing that brings me here tonight. One officer told me I shouldn't go by his words, meaning Lieutenant Petrini's words, which I just thought was a really odd thing to say. And what am I supposed to go by? Um, presumably, I am supposed to go by the words in his apology, but I was being told not to go by other words. It just that didn't make sense to me. Um, someone else said he's upset he was upset about officers lo lost in the line of duty. That worried me even more because don't police officers face terribly challenging and upsetting situations regularly? I would think it's a core part of the job to work through this productively instead of lashing out. Several cops said to me, trust me, he's a good cop. I ask all of us to determine that a fundamental part of being a good cop is not writing articles like these submitting them, helping to ensure that they are published, ensuring they're distributed to a wide audience. These words simply cannot come from someone who's a good cop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after Betty Stone will be Jordan Weinstein. I'm Betty Stone. I'm, I live at 99 Harlow Street in East Arlington, and I'm town meeting member from Precinct 7. Of the 1,000-plus um, people who signed the petition that's being submitted to you this evening, many of them appended extra comments or testimonials, and I'd like to share with you some of those comments. Experts on bias will tell you that we all have bias. The first step to overcoming it is to admit that it's there. The next step is to put practices in place that help us be more aware and to mitigate against its effects. The worst thing we can do is to not acknowledge it and not make an effort to change. I live in Arlington and I'm worried and scared. Risk for violence is best dealt with by a forensic evaluation, not restorative justice. Maggots, animals, putting people down. A U.S. Army veteran and former corrections worker, I am appalled by this officer's apparent to repeat history of vile, dehumanizing screed. My father was born and raised in Arlington and the son of first-generation Armenian Americans. I am adopted and of English and French descent and struggle with bipolar disorder. My wife is a Jewish American. We love Arlington and want to call it our home. We will not stand for the blatant ignorance displayed by Lieutenant Rick Padrini and the apparent lack of accountability during the RJ process. While I'm generally supportive of our town government, I found the town's treatment of Padrini to have been ill-advised, counterproductive, and lacking in transparency. And I feel strongly that it needs to be revisited with input from the town's residents. A police officer's role involves protecting people and keeping people safe. This seems to be missing in the actions and words of Lieutenant Rick Padrini. It's concerning to me 
that police officers around this country are allowed to act with impunity. And I expect much better from Arlington, which I view as a progressive neighbor. I'm also struck by the irony of Sergeant Padrini being allowed to complete restorative justice when he derided it multiple times in the articles he published. This individual's behavior is deeply concerning and affects how safe anyone living or traveling in Arlington feels. I believe this case and its final outcome have implications far beyond the town of Arlington. If the town fulfills the requests contained in this petition, Arlington may become a model for other communities facing similar situations. Thank you. Thank I you urge the town to stand on the right side of um, history and set uh, a positive example. Thank you so thank much. You. And if any, anyone wants to submit their statements, please feel free to. After Jordan Weinstein, Weinstein is Louise Popkin. Yeah, hi, Jordan Weinstein, uh, Precinct 21, uh, Lennon Road in Arlington. I just wanted to uh, first clear up uh, what seemed to be a misunderstanding of what was in the petition and what was being asked uh, by the thousand, uh, more than a thousand people who signed the petition. Uh, it does not ask for the dismissal or the termination of Lieutenant Padrini. Uh, it asks that he put on, uh, be put on desk assignment uh, unarmed until the town goes through a process uh, that, where it can evaluate its uh, uh, bias. Um, the other question I had is, uh, uh, Madam Chair, you've mentioned a couple of times that there will be a community forum, but no one has, as of uh, this moment, said anything about where or when it's going to be. Do you have any idea when this community forum is going to be held? Well, the petitions will go to the town manager. Um, I don't, because we don't have involvement in that except to follow up on it. I don't know if Attorney Heim, if you know the meeting has been set yet. When the manager comes back, um, I'll see if he has a date set, but I, I honestly don't know. I'm not being disrespectful. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't, I don't have that information on the top of my head. Uh, the manager's obviously at the uh, affordable housing presentation before the ARB. I'm sorry, housing production meeting uh, before the ARB. Um, I, I understand okay. that he's going to try to That's come fine. back. And, and tonight, this is just Citizens Open Forum. We, we, I don't want to stray from the law in terms of answering questions, so we're just here to take what you have to say. So. Okay. I'm sure the manager, when he announces it, you all will um, have access to it and probably become aware immediately. Thank well, you. Well, I would also assume that the select board could hold a meeting of its own if it so chose. Um, I want to continue on the testimonials that were uh, responses to our petition that was signed by more than 1,000 people and dozens of community organizations. Um, one respondent said, Padrini's, Padrini's words affected much more than just one town and risk more than just his own actions going forward. His words affected communities across the Commonwealth and influenced police in heavily POC, people of color communities. Another respondent said, because I know that the town officials may see signatures from non-Arlington residents as less valid, let me offer this. I live in Massachusetts, I travel to and through Arlington. What your police officers do and whether they're dangerous to people is of my immediate concern. This is in addition to my very strong feelings that the larger community needs to be accountable to stop the spread and acceptance of white supremacy. And white supremacy is very much the correct term for this man's beliefs. Arguably, our Constitution guarantees even malevolent men like him the right to hold and share his poisonous propaganda. But it doesn't ensure him the right to share them in his position of armed authority. It's terrifying that this man is allowed to continue to be on our streets, given authority to carry a weapon and to potentially hurt people. The steps that Arlington has supposedly taken are meaningless, empty gestures, and it tells the world and your neighbors here in Massachusetts that Arlington is okay with this, that you support and condone white supremacy at an officer who, given the combination of his virulently racist views and his views on disabled people, is pretty much a recipe for harm to vulnerable residents. Thank you. Shame on Arlington. Get it Thank together you. and take some action. Give it three and a half. Um, after Louise Popkin will be Matt Pockris. I'm going to continue with the comments. 
Since moving to Arlington four years ago, I have been proud of the sustained commitment to racial justice in the face of disturbingly racist actions in schools and on public property. Acceptance of the proposals in this petition would restore my wavering faith in the potential of our town to chart a firm and clear path for inclusive justice that addresses the needs of all marginalized citizens. Another says, across the nation, it is obvious that more precise psychological screening needs to be administered to applicants for law enforcement positions. Lieutenant Padrini would seem to have the kinds of issues that should bar him from a career in law enforcement, let alone being authorized to carry a gun. Another, this process of restorative justice was misused in this case. Whatever process was used under the umbrella of RJ was inappropriate and neither restorative for those hurt by this police officer, nor did it do justice for those hurt or for the Arlington Police Department and other groups working hard to promote human rights in Arlington and surrounding towns. Further, those hurt by this officer's words and the public at large are being kept in the dark about what actually happened in the restorative justice process for this officer. How can we then expect to trust that our police forces are really fair and committed to unbiased protection of all citizens. If a more comprehensive, fair process of investigation and reparation is not made, this miscarriage of justice will stay in Arlington indefinitely and have a lasting chilling effect on people in surrounding communities. This must be addressed in a way that preserves the RJ process as it is meant to work for those who have committed a crime and not for those who have not committed a crime. Next, hate-based words lead to hate-based action, which makes Arlington unsafe for ev everyone. Next, the actions and racist statements by this police officer of, from Arlington negatively impact all of our communities. Next, I plan to boycott all Arlington stores and restaurants until this matter is resolved to my satisfaction. Next. My biggest concern is that after the RJ process, Lieutenant Padrini was returned to the same job as before with no consequence other than an apology. How is that right? And what message does that send to Lieutenant Padrini and the Arlington community? Next, threats of violence should be evaluated by forensically trained mental health providers. Next, thanks to all who are working to reverse the misuse of restorative justice. Officer Padrini is not fit to serve the town of Arlington because of his discriminatory views and his call for violence against people he is supposed to serve and protect. Next, I hope Arlington will heed this petition and set the example for other towns and small cities like mine in Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, after Matt Pokris, we have John Saboranat. Sanbora Natsu, I apologize, I know I did not do very well. So, um, is Matt here? Uh, Matt's not here. Can someone read for him? Uh, no, I'm going to respect everybody who's on the list. Um, are you on the list anyways? John Sanbora Natsu, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, thank you for uh, having the forum. My name is John Sanbora Natsu, I live on Varnum Street. Um, point of order before you begin timing me, can I address two different issues at this uh, that have been brought up you tonight. You can say whatever you want for say three minutes. Like. Thank you very much. Very briefly, I do want to um, support the uh, motion that uh, these folks here have brought forward about the petting zoo on town day. Uh, this summer, I uh, was in the Cambridge Common, and there was a, p a petting zoo. I don't know if it was the same company. And it was really horrifying to see the way the animals were being terrorized. Imagine a tiny little pen and these toddlers chasing within a space of three feet these little uh, baby um, uh, ducks. Uh, who are clearly going to get injured. And I say this as someone who teaches ethics at the college level. I teach uh, ethics at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. So I think it's, I just strongly support uh, your motion. Um, regarding the possibility of termination uh, for Padrini in the town manager's open letter in August, he cited his concern that it would not be upheld in arbitration as the reason they did not seek it in this case. However, this ignores the trend of recent decisions regarding officers in the Commonwealth who engage in racist rhetoric. In 2017, a police officer in Springfield was fired after making an abhorrent comment on social media about anti-racist activist Heather Heyer, who was killed during the Charlottesville protests. The officer was denied reinstatement during arbitration, and the Springfield Police Commissioner stated, 
In 2012, a cop was fired from the Lemonster Police Department for calling an African-American Red Sox player a racist slur. When an Arlington resident brought up this case to the town manager when asking about termination, Mr. Chapdelen erroneously stated this officer had been reinstated. But the officer actually lost his arbitration case in 2013 and remains fired. Of the firing, the Lemonster police chief stated, quote, his comments were repugnant and violated the standards we expect from all Lemonster police officers. In 2009, a Boston Police Department officer who called an African-American Harvard University professor a racial slur in an email was immediately terminated. This case was asserted to set a new precedent for termination of officers for racist, racist rhetoric in Massachusetts. In 2010, he was denied reinstatement by an arbiter. The Boston Police Commissioner stated, quote, given the egregious nature of his actions and its effect on our community, I strongly believe that the only appropriate discipline is termination. We will not allow the actions, actions he said, of one to damage the community relationships that are essential to our mission to serve the citizens of Boston. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Casper Kasparian, and after Casper will be Robin Bergman. Hi, my name is Caspar Kasparian. I live at 285 Renfrew Street. I'm a town meeting member for Precinct 18. I'm going to read from this because I'm not going to read to remember everything I want to say. <laughs> we as people should stand up for what is morally right against what is wrong. And I ask, what should we expect from those we entrust with leadership in our community? I'm disappointed that the select board, in conjunction with others who are responsible within this purview, for cons uh, has considered no consequence for Officer Petrini that assures our public safety in Arlington. In a conversation last November that our town manager had with Chief Ryan, Chief Ryan said, one critical element of restorative justice is to show remorse and a willingness to show responsibility for your actions and the harm caused by your actions. I don't think that he is that, that in that mindset and his view on our community values are likely to change in any meaningful way. And the town manager reply was, I fear you're right about that. I fear you're right about that. Given Officer Pedrini's negative history and the risk associated with it, it is reasonable to disarm him and to let him continue in the Arlington Police Department serving desk duty responsibilities. I ask that all those who can decide contingencies for Officer Pedrini reconsider what was initially decided and consider this option in the best interest of our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we have um, Robin Bergman and after Robin will be Andy Oram. Hi, Robin Bergman, 320 Park Avenue. Thanks for letting us speak. I'm going to continue reading some of the comments from our petition. Um, I work in Arlington. I don't feel that Arlington's actions to discipline Lieutenant Pedrini for his racist actions go far enough. I don't feel safe in a community that sends a message to Arlington residents and business operators that actions like Lieutenant Pedrini are in line with our values as American citizens. And the next one. The dehumanization of human beings in his writings is alarming, as is his understanding of immigration law and international treaties. He has strong opinions about, quote, liberals, and especially offensively, illegals, and his habit of loving, lumping everyone together into groups that he believes are monolithic and subhuman makes it concerning that he can be impartial in his policing. My hope is that this issue can be investigated further, and if found necessary, the individual in question can undergo further evaluation and training. Another. I was appalled when this story broke last year. 
This is a wake-up call for Arlington to educate law enforcement and others in leadership regarding implicit bias and to ensure that racism and bigotry are not condoned. And another, as a previous resident of Arlington, this saddens but does not surprise me. I'd thought about moving back when I can afford a house, but this kind of behavior does not represent a community I'd want to raise children in. And another, this man's perspective, which he shares through his writing, reflects the exact attitudes that are cutting up our country right now and deeply polarizing it. The problem is there's no willingness to really listen and ultimately cultivate acceptance and tolerance. Moving towards love is the only way. People get burned when you fight fire with fire. This man is adding to the collective fire. People have already been hurt, and he doesn't get it. Provincial attitudes are part of an old evolutionary trend that we must change if we are to move ahead and effectively take care of each other. Another, public servants should be held to a higher standard, not given a pass because they risk their lives. And another, given recent national events, Arlington needs to step up. We cannot and will not tolerate our police fomenting hate and division. And another, the decision to apply RJ in the case of Officer Pedrini was made inappropriately by town officials and the APD. Accordingly, I believe that the petition to conduct a review of the APD for bias should be extended to other town government entities, not only the APD. And another, I am disgusted by the racist propaganda the Massachusetts Police Association publishes. It scares me to think that not only is the person writing this offensive white supremacist rhetoric a police officer, he is also on the executive board of their union. I am afraid for all of us. Thank you. Um, next is Andy Orham, and after that is Micaiah Healy, Howard Street. Thank you. Andy Orham of High Haith Road. One of my children is transgender, which puts them <clears throat> in the category, as you've already heard, of people who are often abused, who are denied medical treatment, who are um, mistreated by the police. Now, I know that police are human like the rest of us. They uh, don't understand people, and they're afraid of people they don't understand. And so there are rules and protocols for handling difficult situations. It's part of professional behavior. And when a policeman uh, encourages people to ignore professional behavior and to follow their worst impulses, that person has to be removed from the police force, and the town has to enforce the right protocols and um, give people the training to act properly. I know it's hard to challenge the police. Brookline is uh, in a similar situation, if you saw today's Boston Globe. It's hard, they're very powerful. I need the police to protect me, and I need them to protect my transgender child as well. But if they're not going to act professional, they are dangerous. Thank you. Um, after Ms. Healy, Rajir Soneja? Soneja. I didn't say do your first name justice. Sorry. Hi, my name is Micaiah. Um, I live on Howard Street, and I am a black woman and many of your neighbors. Um, I'm also the co-chair of the diversity task group. I was the former chair up until um, last month. So it's good to be with you all. Um, I've been encouraged to speak up and speak my mind. Um, somebody said, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, and we need to hear your voice. And I've met with many, many people um, over the past year, um, and um, I just want to say, like, I do feel a lot of hope. Um, this issue has brought so many of our neighbors together in a terrible, like, twisted sort of way, but um, I know a bunch of people because of this issue, um, and I do feel a little bit of hope of what we can do, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work, and I have one ask of you all tonight. So, um, yeah, I have talked with a range of people, um, including many commissioners in the, um, in the um, Human Rights Commission, many of our town administrative, um, the diversity task group, and we all want the same thing. We all want healing, we all want to move forward, we all want safety in this town. Um, and, um, you know, that's positive. That's great that everyone wants to come to the table and provide safety for our, our town. Um, this has to stop at some point. This has to stop. Um, and we can't go back 
regardless of how I personally feel about the issue or regardless about how any of us feel. Um, and I really think that um, it's great to have a consistent message going forward from the town leadership, from all of you. Um, that, uh, and I think the way that we can do that is through adopting a code of conduct that can be enforced. So that is my one ask, um, because that is in your power to be able to adopt town policy. Um, and I don't know how to do that. I'm not an expert, but we want to help make that happen. I think that is the log jam to us being able to have a community conversation. Um, because if there's not a structure in place, if there's not um, a policy in place to, that is enforceable, then we, we can't meet, like it's gonna re-traumatize everyone. Um, to just to be in the same room together. And I know that's coming down, the, that's coming down, right? We have to um, get in the room together at some point. Uh, so I think that is my, my one ask. I could, I could say so many things, but thank you. Thank you so much. After Rajir is Kathleen Lentz. Hi, my name is Rajiv Soneja. I live on uh, 13 Mary Street. Um, I thank you all for allowing me to speak again. I was here a month ago, unprepared, uh, but I want to reiterate uh, the writings of this police officer were racist, they were supremacist, and they were unambiguously uh, anti-immigrant and other marginalized groups. What we have not heard is anybody in the town leadership explicitly state that. Um, I consider myself privileged and emboldened enough to come again, second time. I've been working with a lot of people on this issue, but I do realize I consider myself uh, vulnerable. I'm an immigrant. Um, uh, I'm obviously not a person of ethnic majority. So I have been called names, I have been accused of many things online. I have been called divisive for working on this as many others have. So it would really help if the town leadership, the town manager, members of the select board explicitly come out and state these writings as such. They're racist and divisive and they should never happen again. Um, but I also have uh, some asks of you. I volunteer with the Envision Arlington's diversity task group as with uh, Mikaya Healy, who spoke before me. I am also the co-chair, and we just took a vote today, and I want to state that the diversity task group is the first town um, committee to act explicitly endorse the petition that was presented to the select board today. So as part of that, yeah, as part of that, I would, I would like to in, uh, invite you to work with the marginalized communities. I would like to, uh, for you to take the leadership and um, speak to all the people who feel harmed by this. I understand how uh, fearful I am. I can only imagine what somebody who's not as privileged, privileged as me feels uh, as a result of these writings. Um, I also want to remind you for letting this li issue linger on as it has for a year now. Uh, just as somebody mentioned about the issue in Brookline, it's been nine years that's been ongoing. So we, did, we definitely do not want a repeat of that in this town. And uh, finally, I just want to say that as per the CBR report's recommendation, uh, they have asked for the town leadership to work with a lot of marginalized communities. I would like you to take a lead on that. It's important for justice not only to be done, it must seem to be have been done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, after, uh, next is Kathleen Lentz. After that is Gwen Wong. Hi, I'm Kathleen Lentz. I live on Newport Street. Um, I, too, am concerned about the reinstatement of, of Lieutenant Pedrini. Clearly, many people are in town, and I think they should be. I'm a psychiatrist, and I know that people who harm others can change. But I also know that people do not change quickly. And I also know that being required to change with some, you know, s some reason like losing your job um, can often result in a superficial appearance of change. The restorative justice process was inappropriate for this situation. Restorative justice is an innovative, idealistic approach to wrongdoing in a community, but its application is not appropriate for all situations. As with mediation, which is another alternative to traditional legal procedures, there must be no significant power differential in the picture. For example, in mediation, domestic violence is never addressed. It is turned back to the court system. Re restorative justice can work well for teens charged with vandalism, vandalism or shoplifting, 
even in some cases, adult crimes of a similar severity. But in the case of a police officer who has written materials threatening to the public, the power differential is obviously huge, and the threat is a serious one. Communities for Restorative Justice, which I understand supported this process with the lieutenant's threatening writings, should have rejected the use of restorative justice in this situation. I believe Mr. Ch Chapdelaine's decision to use RJ was well-intentioned, but it was, in fact, a poor choice. Hate speech has been rising in the United States, and hate crimes have followed. Arlington needs to go back to square one, put the lieutenant on desk work for now so that residents are not subjected to the fear that the town's police force may, may mistreat them, and then work to, to find another, better approach to this situation. Personally, I think that firing Lieutenant Pedrini will be required but I also think that it's appropriate for the town to try to work with him to get help for himself to do a real process, not the brief, informal, um, non-professional process that restorative justice ends up being in a situation this severe. I think also the town, in some, in some way, owns, owes him an apology for using this inappropriate Thank method you. to address the issue. Thank you very much. You. Uh, Gwen Wong, after Gwen will be June Ratowski. My name is Gwendolyn Wong. I live at 151 Lowell Street. Having written a public apology for hate speech that he characterized as, quote, careless and crude or thoughtless, Lieutenant Pedrini has been given a new multi-year contract and a gun and remains a problem for all of us to solve together. His published writings and the town's response has damaged the trust between the community, our police department, and town leadership. We need to plan next steps together to rebuild trust. The CBI report re states the obvious. The process is far from complete. Quoting from the report, Ms. Smith wrote that the town chose, quote, a confidential RJ process distinctly lacking clarity and transparency, treating the situation as, quote, an employer-employee matter with no avenue for input from affected groups or members of the community at large. Ms. Smith further writes, quote, the process did not repair harms and that the process calls for Padrini to, quote, participate in further community dialogues. The sad reality is that Lieutenant Padrini shamed himself, his family, his profession, his department, and the Arlington community. And by returning to him his service weapon, the entire town, but certainly and specifically, the town manager, the select board, and the Arlington Police Department are complicit in taking on a risk that this rogue cop may take out his frustrations in a manner that will further damage the reputation and potentially harm more lives in this beautiful town. Choosing a confidential RJ process with no transparency, our current situation with a petition of a thousand plus signatures and speakers at every select board meeting can only be described as an utterly predictable outcome with no end in sight. I don't believe that this man is suitable to be a police officer by saying, quote, I am sick and tired of the social justice warriors telling us how to do our jobs. He's really saying that he has no interest in professional development or learning new approaches, new approaches to policing. And he should not be armed Anyone who openly seeks violence, let meet violence with violence and get the job done, should not have a gun. In summary, Lieutenant Padrini has yet to meet his harmed public. Lieutenant Padrini needs to honor his written pledge in his public apology that he is, quote, committed to meeting with community groups. The CBI report agrees. I hope we can all agree about this. 
He needs to convince the community in face-to-face -face meetings that he has learned something about himself and he deserves his job Thank for you. another five years. Thank you very much. Um, next is June Wilkowski. And after June is Kristen Martin. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is June Rutkowski. I live at Alpine Terrace. I am deeply disappointed and kind of shocked that the town manager did not do the right thing in Lieutenant Padrini's case, that he did not attempt to terminate him. Mr. Chapdelaine explained his reasoning in an open letter. I appreciate this effort, but I believe that Officer Padrini giving him a smooth return to the APD via restorative justice was the wrong thing to do. I'm also deeply disappointed and shocked that the select board at the September 9th meeting unanimously approved the town manager's, manager's handling of the case. There are glaring contradictions between what the town manager and select board have said and what they have done. In his open letter, the town manager called Padrini's words xenophobic and vile and inconsistent with what the APD stands for, but he didn't try to remove him from the APD. Some select board members have spoken forcefully about how unacceptable, untrue, and reprehensible Padrini's published opinions are, but they gave their full fawning support to the town manager's decisions, decisions that let Padrini avoid any real consequences for his far-reaching hateful calls for violence. You cannot say you deplore racism and calls for, calls for violence and support decisions that returned an outspoken racist to the police force. You cannot expect people to trust your leadership when you dismiss their concerns about how this decision, the situation was handled. And you cannot expect people to forgive and feel safe when you have put one man's security above the security of many. That the town manager and select board that the town manager and select board might not see the contradictions between their words and their actions is cause for great concern. That they do see the contradictions but chose to ignore them for the sake of expediency is just plain wrong. The town manager made a mistake in offering Padrini restorative justice and the select board compounded this error by supporting his decision to do so. I would like to see you all admit your mistakes to the town and especially to the marginalized people who were targeted by Padrini. That would be a real start in the healing process that we all want. If it is really too late to terminate Padrini, I call on the town manager to do everything in his power to keep him and his gun away from people until his contract with the town expires. That is the very least that should be done. Thank you. Um, after Christian Martin, we'll have Elizabeth Gray. Hi, I'm Kristen Martin. I live on Fairmont Street. Um, everyone read already what I was going to read, so I will speak from personal experience. This is my first time here, and it's very uncomfortable because I'm outing myself, um, and it will come with victim shaming and blaming of why didn't you report that years ago, um, but I'm used to that. Um, I had a run-in with Padrini about 15 years ago. I had a best friend call me and say, um, I'm in an abusive relationship and I need help. And I said, you, we need to go to the police station. We need to get something on file because if you don't get anything on file, nothing's going to work because I was in that situation, which is why she called me and I had nothing on file. So... We went to the police station and she was like, I'm really scared and I know what's gonna happen here. And I said, I know, and I know what's gonna happen here, um, but we have to try and maybe there'll be a different outcome. So we knew walking in that it was gonna be uncomfortable, that there was a possibility that she would be um, victim blamed and shamed. <coughs> And she was, and she was by Padrini. I luckily was there with her, um, and I'm willing to speak up for anybody, so I have no problem um, him bullying me. And we did ask for a restraining order, and he did go into her with, well, why are you in an abusive relationship, and why did you do this, and why did you do that? So it was really a wonderful experience, as you can tell, and um, that friend, gave me the articles that he, you know, the, that were released and we were both like, we're not surprised. We're not surprised by any of, of this behavior. Um, so I'm here on behalf of her because I don't think she would out herself, but it's also like, 
what's the point? You know, no one's gonna believe me because when this came out, there was, uh, we were in the comment section on the Arlington website and all that stuff, and I said, well, I know from experience <coughs> this is exactly what happened, and people from the town called me a liar, and I was like, why would we lie about this? I don't even wanna be talking about this. Um, so I'm, I just don't understand why he's not fired um, for stuff that is on file for what he said. Um, it's really concerning, and I know you're like, why do you guys keep doing this, blah, 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 um, but that's kind of you know what protesting is. It's uncomfortable and disruptive, and we gotta keep doing what we're doing <coughs> for your time. Thank you. And then, lastly, Elizabeth Dre. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Dre on Jason Street. Um, I've spoken to everybody here many times, so now I'm going to speak to the residents of Arlington. This is a very challenging time, and we are at a crossroads, and I urge you all to pay attention. Talking about this situation is hard, it's uncomfortable, it's stressful, it takes emotional energy that we don't have. It takes time from our already packed daily lives that we don't have to give. It's much easier to stay in our lanes. It's much easier to be too busy. It's much easier to wait for somebody else to do this. But we can't do that anymore, a year has gone by. We have wasted a year waiting. Many of us, including myself, have had the luxury to believe that Arlington was a progressive, safe, and welcoming town. And it is for some of us. But at the same time, it's important to acknowledge that other people have a different reality of Arlington, a different experience when they walk and drive down our streets, when they shop at the same stores, when they send their children to the same schools. Arlington is not welcoming to everybody. It is not safe for everybody. We must take the brave step of admitting that, that we do not have the same experience as each other here in Arlington. And neither one of these realities is wrong. It just is. But it's always been this way. And before Lieutenant Petrini's speech, hateful speech, we could just pretend it wasn't there. But he brought it out in the open. And now our leadership had a choice to make. Dig in and do the hard work. Or look away and hope that nobody notices. You chose the latter. And by choosing to protect Lieutenant Pedrini and the status quo at the expense of the residents and myself, at the expense of the integrity and the reputation of the town of Arlington, you have abdicated your responsibility. So now it's up to us, the people. It's up to you who are at home listening, who are mad at the words that I'm saying that make you uncomfortable. It's up to you at home who are nodding in agreement. Discomfort is necessary to make change happen. We have to do the hard work because our leadership didn't and won't. The majority of, of select board members told me that in person that they didn't really know what restorative justice was when they improved, approved the town manager's plan. Some still don't. The fact that they never took the time to educate themselves about something so incredibly explosive to this community and their elected and paid jobs is a gut punch to all of us. Thank you. If you want to do one or two more sentences. Thank you very much. I would love to. Okay. Um, Arlington, I'd like to say only one person is, resp is responsible, responsible for destroying the reputation of the town of Arlington and the trust we once had in the leadership in the police department, and that person is, is Rick Pedrini. Please find us online at arlingtonfightsracism.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next we go to, next we go to correspondence received. Um, is there a motion to move receive? So moved. Moved by Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. 
De Corsi. Um, does anybody need to refer um, a, a correspondence number 15 we, uh, we heard from in uh, Citizens Open Forum? The request for the crosswalk um, that came via the answer center, should that go to the town manager, to the police department? I'll route it to the planning department, planning police, yeah. Yes. She was going to come on, on uh, 13. Yeah, she's, she's here, Diane, if she wants to. The, the, the first who's... agenda item? No, number 13. Number. Yeah, but we don't do that. 13. Well, Usually, I'll let her do it briefly if she's here and she sat here all night. Is someone here on 13? Uh, yes. Okay, sorry. But in the future, we, in Mrs. Kropelka, Mrs. Kropelka, in the future, correspondence received is, yeah, I didn't know it's until it's an agenda item, okay? I, I okay. didn't know she was coming. Yeah, but in the future because it's going to add to everything. Okay, go ahead, name, name and address. What? Hi, um, my name's Cheryl Master Giovanni, and um, I've lived in Arlington for 15 years. This is my first select board meeting. And, oh, um, God bless you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, um, so um, I've li I live in Arlington Heights. My son just started kindergarten at Dallin, and he loves it. And we love that he can walk to school every day. So I'm just um, requesting, um, I know you probably can't see this from where you're sitting, but. Um, Walking to school to and from every day. We just live at a really dangerous intersection. If you know this intersection, it's a five-way intersection. And um, I know someday my son will be walking without me walking him. And um, so there are several kids on our street, too, that walk the same route. And unfortunately, there's um, a crosswalk across from Oakland here, and there's one going across Wachusett. But there's really no safe way for us to cross from here to get to and from Dallin. So I just um, wanted the town to just consider adding another crosswalk in there just to make it a safe place for us to cross. That's it, so thank you, thank you for- And what we've done is we've referred it to the town manager, yep. which will um, consult with the police department, and then when they come back with a recommendation resolution, it'll be an agenda okay. item and you'll be notified. Um, okay. You know, you don't have to come in, but if you, you know, wanna come in and- um, yeah. And anybody else? Okay, thank, thank you. you so much for and your time. Sometimes they go to tech. Thank you. Yes. Um, let's see. The soccer club from Dean Carmen. I think we're just receiving that. And the NSTAR petition, um, that again is just receipt. So if there's, Mr. Dunn? So on the animal welfare, um, I would ordinarily say refer to town day committee, but I, but I know that they're, they've got it already. But at the same time, let's just, uh, let's say refer to town day committee as well. Definitely, definitely. Okay. So um, on a motion to move receipt by Mr. Caro, seconded by uh, Mr. DeCourcy, number 13 to refer to the town manager, number 14 receipt, number 15 to refer to the town day committee, and number 16 receipt. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor <coughs> say aye. 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 aye, all those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? Attorney Hyde? Just one uh, small thing. I want to uh, thank the uh, Attorney General's Office Municipal Law Unit as well as the um, Town Clerks Association. Uh, a lot of folks have been really helpful in making sure that there was an expedited review of certain bylaws that were submitted a little bit later in the schedule. And um, those bylaws have, for the most part, been approved. There's two that they're holding on to that are um, one town bylaw and one zoning bylaw, just because they need a little bit more time, but they went ahead and proved the ones, including the tree protection bylaw, which is very important, and a few other measures, which they were basically ready to go on with a somewhat uh, expedited review. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chapdelaine? Uh, I, just two quick pieces. One, this is my first meeting back since the trip to Japan to visit the town's sister city. And uh, I guess I just want to say thank you to the board for the opportunity to, to travel. And uh, I want to assure you, the people in Nagakakio cherish and value the relationship with Arlington more than I ever could have appreciated. So I, it was, I, for, for all of us, I think, finding the right, right way to support that relationship is, I think, is an important thing for us to do. Uh, secondly, I was gone for an hour over at the ARB to give the same presentation on housing that I gave to the board back in the summer, and um, I spoke, a number of citizens spoke, and um, all of the citizens who spoke noted, uh, depend no matter their perspective, that they were astounded with how civil and productive the dialogue was. So um, we, have, we have some hope for a productive dialogue over the course of the next year or so, so that, I thought that was very positive. Thank you. 
Mr. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. A couple things. Um, last Friday, uh, Mr. Kuro, Mr. Chapdelaine, and I attended the ribbon cutting at the New Minuteman High School, our, our public vocational high school, and um, it was a, a, a great event. Uh, the students, there's a central core in the building, and all the students were brought down for the assembly, and, and there were a number of people from the member communities, and a number of people um, were recognized, and one person who wasn't there because he was away, but who had a big part in this was Mr. Dunn, because this would have never have happened if the regional agreement wasn't reworked between 2013 and 2016. So um, it was a great event. I want to thank Mr. Dunn for that work, because it, it as I said, that in order to move forward to the new building, we had to move forward with the new agreement. I know your work was instrumental in that. Um, second thing is, is just to, the town manager and I have been talking a little bit about, um, and, and this goes back to uh, water rates in, in the community, and we voted a, an increase um, over the summer. And, and one thing I, I've been asked by a couple of people is, well, we don't know what, a lot of times what we're buying when we're, we get our water bills because it's, a CCF is 100 cubic feet of water. Well, 100 cubic feet of water is 748 <laughs> gallons. And so um, the new rates are up on the town's website and we're working to put something up there so people can convert what they're receiving for bills every quarter to gallons, just to get an idea of what their consumption is. So uh, we're gonna continue yeah. to do that. That's all I have. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'm really sorry I missed the ribbon cutting. It was, uh, the calendar was, was very <laughs> cruel. And they, they, they'd sent out that uh, save the date, I don't know, like three months beforehand and I'd already bought my ticket. And I was really, I'm, I'm sorry I missed it, but I'm very excited uh, at that event. Thank you for sure. both for going. Nothing else. Mr. Carroll? Um, I just wanted to just briefly say that um, for an hour before our meeting this evening, um, Mr. Chaplain and I um, had a chance to meet with Mr. Ciano, who's our representative on the Mass Massachusetts uh, Citizens Community Advisory, advisory Community Advisory Committee, Community Advisory Committee dealing with the airplane noise. Mm -hmm. East Arlington. Um, uh, Mr. Casaraba, Myron Casaraba from Belmont, who is um, his counterpart and who has done an incredible amount of analytical work on this, um, came to, to brief a few residents and, and the manager and uh, one of the residents that asked me to come along. Long story short, um, as I think we all know, there's been an ongoing study that um, MIT has been doing um, <clears throat> in support of this process to see if there's a way to redo those flight routes that will, I think the hope for, for a lot of folks is that we'll redisperse some of those airplane routes so there's not such a concentrated impact. Um, and for us, that's residents in East Arlington. Um, what looks like is going to happen is that, that um, I think Mr. Ciano will probably be working with others to, to pull together a recommendation on what maybe the top few options that would be uh, most advantageous to Arlington would be, um, he's gonna be called upon to go go in and, and, and actually vote and participate in, in meeting with the other communities uh, within um, the Massport um, district. And I, I think that whatever he comes in to recommend, he's gonna want to discuss with us and, and get some backing from the, from the board so that he, he has um, you know, some teeth walking in and it's, it's all across the board. It's a very technical discussion, I'll, I'll say, but there's been a lot of analysis, but just so that that's on our mind. I know that in the past, the board has written letters to the FAA and, and such, so um, it persists. So just another fun one coming our way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Just wanted to thank the Arlington Fire Department and the Firefighters Union for a really top, really tier one event that they had a couple weeks ago at the Burlington Marriott. Glad I made it. I originally went to the Sons of Italy, but then I called Marie and found out the actual <laughs> location. But I did get there before Steve, so. But um, you, it was a great honor for um, both Chief Jefferson and the three other, the, uh, three other re retirees with, with a lot of good laughs. And then the other thing is yesterday I ran in the uh, Somerville 5K. I figured I'd try to do it without training at all, which is why I can't stand up right now. But... I do want to thank, thank the uh, police department, first 5K that I ran in Arlington, and I didn't know how much work they did to keep the route secure, 
of the uh, officers that were involved, I saw them each about three or four times because they kept <coughs> driving around to different points on, on the route. And they, uh, they kept us safe, and the DPW came right in after and, and cleaned up as soon as we cleared out of there. So it was a great event. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I, I forgot. I had one other item. Um, so I think we, I certainly wasn't. I think most of us were approached by some uh, citizens who were talking about reordering the order of... Uh, uh, for town meeting, the mm -hmm. warrant article order. And uh, I've been persuaded that they're making a good case. And so what I'd like, to, what I'm gonna request the chair to do is that when we open the warrant at a future, at a, and we put that on the agenda, at the same time, under put a second agenda item on there with, where we talk about what we think the agenda would be, invite uh, the moderator, the FinCom chair, uh, the ARB chair, anyone who, not requiring them obviously, but right. if they wish to weigh in. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to be making a case that we should be doing effectively kind of like sl most generally select board articles, generally zoning, generally finance, but with flexibility, but th in that order. And I just wanted to let the board know that I was contemplating bringing that up for a future item. Definitely. And, and just to that end, I'll say what I said to Pete um, and through Pete to uh, Gordon Jameson and I'm sure others. Uh, when I first got on the board in 1999 and again in 2009, it always irritated me that the Board of Selectmen, now Select Board, <clears throat> even though we oversee the warrant, uh, don't necessarily, do not place the order of arrangement. And uh, what I said to Pete was, um, the two times that I've tried to do it, it's been like I want to rewrite the Ten Commandments and change their position. Which, you know, so I kind of had, had given up, but, but I am very encouraged because I think starting off with the zoning articles, right, you know, first bat, especially for, you know, brand new town meeting members, and sometimes for returning town meeting members who might just be really doing uh, heavy perusal through the packet. Um, I had said, and we can have this conversation in December when we open the warrant, that um, I felt, you know, where the Finance Committee articles are appropriate, um, I always wanted to open with sele uh, selectmen articles and 10 registered voters because I think that's a good way if you're new to kind of gear into it. But we can have that conversation in the future and what I'm taking from that is something I didn't have the other two times is um, if a majority or all of the board agrees um, we'll have a really good conversation about that and um, maybe rearrange the order. Mm -hmm. So um, with that before I take a motion to adjourn our next re regularly scheduled meeting is October 28th 2019 I'll take a motion to adjourn by oh, Madam Chair uh, did we need to dispense with number one? Oh, we do move approval moved by mr. Dunn Second. seconded by mr. Curo um, I don't know that she came in um, Chiropractic. Um, she was gonna come I to be Should here. I read it into the No? Okay. Um, so uh, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn on agenda item one, the proclamation. Um, any further questions or comment? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Move Good to adjourn. Because I completely forgot about that. Thank you. A motion to adjourn by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd. All in favor say aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Good night, everybody. Aye.